Hey y'all, we are back and we are on part two of employee versus independent contractor. If you are new here, welcome. I am a licensed attorney out of the state of Missouri. I am Ebony. The title, Money Time with Ebony Dion ESQ. If you get anything of value out of this video, beginning, middle, end, like, share, comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. Turn on your notification bell so you do not miss when I drop this information. Check out the Small Business Grant Playlist. There are several grant opportunities there. As I always say, if you have the money, but you don't know what to do with it, and your business is not legally sound, it doesn't matter. It won't be successful. So I've decided to start a new playlist. If you want to support the channel, come to the Patreon, okay? Over there, it's interactive. You can send me messages. You can make comments. You can do posts. You can do all of those things. I'm going to quickly share my screen just so you can see what's over there. All right, so we are here. Yes, the stuff is locked. I know. Once you join, the stuff will be unlocked and you'll be able to communicate, you know, talk to other entrepreneurs. I think this is a great networking space as well. So come on over if you want to support the channel. But there's that. Don't want to take too much of your time. Now, in our first video, we talked about behavior control. We talked about what those 10 things were. And now we are going to talk about financial control. So when thinking about financial control, as it sounds, who is controlling the money? Not the fact that you have to pay them because that's required because they are performing a task. And as I said in the previous video, make sure you have an independent contractor agreement. And we talked about contracts in some of the previous videos. So definitely go check those out. There's going to be upcoming videos as well. But this is going to be the first step. Making sure there is some type of legally binding agreement to ensure that you all are on the same page of expectations. But from the IRS perspective, let's look at the seven items that they look for when they're trying to figure out, do you in fact have financial control over the individual that is performing the task? The first thing is significant investment. Is the independent contractor significantly invested in their business or are those resources coming from the employer? For example, if they've purchased you know, a lot of equipment, essentially they're showing up with all of their resources, they're investing their money back into their business and they're not coming to you essentially investing zero dollars or minimum dollars and then asking you to then invest what they need, buying the equipment, paying their employees. So they're not looking for you for any financial backing except for to pay them on time when they finish doing their work. Number two, unreimbursed expenses. Is the employer paying them for unreimbursable expenses? Unreimbursable expenses is gonna be those expenses that are not mentioned in that contract unreimbursable expenses could be, but it depends on your contract. It could be travel, right? They're not going to, and when I say travel, I mean, you might want them to fly somewhere. That should be reimbursed. What I'm talking about is I'm, I'm tracking my mileage and I'm expecting for you to pay me every trip that I take to Home Depot. No, that's going to be inside of that payment. So whatever their quote is, they should have allotted for how many trips am I going to have to take to Home Depot? How much is mileage going to be? So no, any unreimbursable costs should be absolved by the independent contractor. Number three, opportunity for profits and losses outside of I lost because you didn't pay me my money. Okay. So this means that they are responsible and they absolve any profits that their business have. They absolve any losses. They're not going to come to you and say, this project took longer than expected, or my assistant decided to not show up to work for three days in a row. And instead of me making a profit of $1,000, I'm now making a profit of $200 and I want you to pay me $800 so I can make my $1,000 profit. If you then say, oh, okay, 
I'll absorb your losses. Let me give you an additional $800. Then that is an employer employee relationship, right? Because the company I work for, I don't know what they lose every year. I know I don't lose my paycheck. So <laughs> that's all that matters, you know? So I'm not going to then have a conversation with them about profits and losses and how that's going to affect me financially. As long as my paycheck clears, that's none of my business, okay? So remember, <laughs> profits and losses, if it's your business, then you are in fact an independent contractor. Number four, services available to the market. This is saying that you are not their only client exclusively. Yes, there can be exclusive contracts and it could be temporarily. Remember, all of this stuff is a caveat. And again, the IRS will look at all of this as a collective. They're not going to say, up. Oh, you said yes to this one or no to that one. So now we're going to make a determination. The determination is made after they look at everything. So all 20 on top of other, you know, outliers and factors that are associated with that. So typically an independent contractor, that is their business. So they're going to have multiple clients, right? That's kind of like if you work at a company, you probably have more than one client, right? Even if you think about fast food restaurants, Every person that comes in there and orders a burger or orders whatever, that is a client. You're not going to restrict them from being able to make money outside of working for you. Number five, method of payment. How is the person paid? By the hour? Are they paid a salary? If that is the case, then you're probably dealing with an employee because an independent contractor is typically paid by the job, meaning that it might be $5,000 is our contract. You might give me a deposit. You might give me a percentage upon substantial completion. But then after substantial completion, I'll get that final payment. You're not tracking my hours. You're not saying, oh, I owe you overtime. It's literally, you owe me $5,000 by the end of this contract. And these are our three touch points of when I should get a percentage of that dollar amount. So there isn't that level of control over how I get paid. I don't have to turn in a timesheet to you as I would for my employer. Number six, payment of the business's travel expenses. So this kind of goes back to what we were talking about as far as my mileage, but I think this is saying specific to if you're required to travel for whatever reason. Now, again, there are caveats because you can hire a wedding photographer and you want them to fly to Maui to record your wedding, photograph your wedding. Those travel expenses are going to be inside of that contract. There is no, that I'm aware of, traveling wedding photographer that is going to absolve his or her own travel expenses and lodging expenses to be at someone's wedding. So again, do not look at these individually. You have to look at them collectively. And once you do that, you will get a decision. So in this instance, you might say, yes, we pay for the travel expenses, but then everything else is no. So the IRS is going to say, oh, well, I mean, they're traveling to this person's wedding. And but for the fact that they have this wedding in Maui, that's not a part of their business structure. So it makes sense that those travel expenses are going to be paid. So I want to just continue to reiterate that just because you fail and not, you know, literally one of the checkpoints, that does not mean that you have mislabeled your person. Number seven, furnishing of tools and equipment. If you are providing them with all of the resources and supplies that they need to perform the task that you have hired them to perform, then they are more likely than not an employee, right? So if you work for your employer, they typically give you an office, they give you a chair, they give you a, they give you a desk, they give you pens, papers, a printer. You don't have to think about anything that is needed to perform that job. All you need to do is show up <laughs> and do what you do. And, you know, some places are probably going to give you a uniform. So if that is what is happening, you have an employee 
versus an independent contractor. There are instances where, you know, if it's, you know, highly secured environments where we have to provide you a certain laptop that locks, or I know I have, I've worked on site for clients where because of the sensitive nature of the information being shared, it would like change the password, I feel like every 10 seconds or something like that. So I had to use a specific product, but everything else, how I completed it, when I completed it, that didn't matter. So again, 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 do not get hung up on one thing and say, oh my gosh, I really have an employee and I need to go pay all these taxes that I need to go get workers comp insurance. No, you don't need to do any of those things. I need you to look at each one individually then analyze it collectively to get to your answer. So those are the seven things that you need to pay attention for. Make sure you wait and check out part three, where we are going to talk about the finale, which is the relationship of the parties. And that is the final bucket that the IRS will look at to then take them all together to say, was this person in fact an employee or was this person in fact an independent contractor? If you got anything of value out of this video, beginning, middle, end, like, share, comment, subscribe, share, share, and share some more. Turn on your notification bell so you can know when I drop my gems. Come to the Patreon. I know y'all want to come over there and have a fabulous time with the rest of the entrepreneurs and do a little networking because network to your network. But other than that, thank you. Thank you for taking time out of your day to sit with me virtually. Thank you for watching this video. And wherever you are in the world, I hope that you are having a beautiful day and I will see you all next time.